welcome back to the channel. This video is all about the AIM-7 Sparrow, a guide to this air-to-air -air missile, and we'll cover a few of the important topics about this missile. First off, an overview of the different air-to-air -air missile types. Then we'll go through the Sparrow variants so that you know which missiles are which. We'll talk about the Dogfight Sparrow, as well as delve into the more modern Sparrow variants, which are available for the Tomcat, the Eagle, and the Hornet, but will they work on the F4E Phantom coming out from Heatblur? So we'll answer all these questions one after another. As always, subscribe, share, comment, and like. And the first question is, what's a Sparrow? Well, the AIM-7 Sparrow was designed in the late 40s, 1949 actually, as a beam rider weapon, turned into a semi-active Fox-1 missile, and ended up being the primary BVR missile beyond visual range for the US until the 90s. Now there's a quick comparison of the types of missiles out there. That's what they call Fox 1, Fox 2, and Fox 3. The three types of air-to-air -air missiles are Fox 1, just like the Sparrow, and this missile needs to be guided by a radar beam from the airplane that's firing it all the way to the target. The Fox 2 is guided by the heat of the target aircraft's engines. So it's a fire and forget missile. You don't need to hold the lock. Usually these are short range missiles. Good example is the Sidewinder. And finally, the latest addition, and that is active radar missiles. These are Fox 3s, like the AIM-120. It has a tiny radar in its seeker. This missile will basically look for the target on its own when it's within range. So it's a fire and forget missile. Don't need to hold lock, like with a Sparrow. But let's come back to our sparrows and talk about the different versions of the sparrows. There have been multiple generations of the initial sparrow design while it was being developed, starting in 1949. Initially, the AIM-7 A, B, and C, we're going to call those the early sparrows. The A was actually a beam riding missile, which means you had to keep a lock on the target the whole time it was flying toward the target. The B was an attempt to make a Fox 3 Sparrow, but at the time the technology just wasn't small enough to miniaturize the Seekers. Then we went over to the C, the D, and the E2. These are the missiles that we are going to really care about because that's likely the missiles that will be on the Phantom. As a matter of fact, the D, the E, and the E2 were the early mid-Vietnam missiles, and we'll talk about the E2 later on in this video. Very interesting missile. Next up is the 7F, and this is an improved version of the E. We're going to call it the Late Vietnam Missile. And these were followed in the very end by the M and the P versions, which are available in the late Cold War planes like the F-15, F-18, and the Tomcat. They use a special monopulse seeker. They have digital components, but will they be available on the F-4E? I have doubts about that. All right, back to the AIM-7 A and B. As mentioned before, these were beam rider or attempts to make a missile. These were the really early versions. Mach 2.5 speed and an awesome range of 10 kilometers. That's six nautical miles. And a 20 kilogram high explosive. The Sparrow 2 was the Canadian attempt to create the active Fox 3 missile, but that did not work out until much later when the AIM-120 came around. So let's keep these ranges in mind. Mach 2.5 speed and a 10 kilometer range. So of course we've done the A and B, so let's get to the C, D, and E. The C, D, and E I'm going to refer to as the early mid-Vietnam missiles. These were the most common ones and the ones we're likely to see on the F-4E Phantom from Heedler. They've got a speed upgrade to Mach 4. Range has been increased to up to 30 kilometers, that's 16 nautical miles. Rear aspect range is three nautical miles. Keep that in mind. You have to be close enough to a target to shoot the enemy in the back. The warhead also got improved to a 30 kilogram, 65 pound continuous rod warhead, not just an explosive. And over 25,000 of those seven E's have been built. That really became the mainstay of the Vietnam War. And also, it had a pretty dismal success rate because it had issues finding targets against the ground. But what about in a dogfight? 
This is where the AIM-7 Sparrow E2 comes in. And there's not too much conversation about this missile because it's one of those dark horses. Well, the E2 is the E-missile, but it had its stabilizer fins reduced, giving it better turn rate and higher performance for dogfights. The fuse would be faster fusing, and it could take a higher G-load. Range? About the same, if not less, because of smaller wings, but much more maneuverable. So if you're going into a mission, you may want to pack some E's and some E2's in case you get into a dogfight where you want to use those E2's. That is the version of the missile that is not spoken too much about, but the E2, E3, E4, about the same range, but it is meant for dogfight mode. This is an important distinction. Keep this in mind. This is important. Now, the Sparrow 3, the F. The F had further upgrades made to it late in the Vietnam conflict. So it will refer to it as a late Vietnam missile. The AIM-7 Sparrow F got its range even more upgraded to 70 kilometers, 38 nautical miles head on. Same Mach 4 speed, but an even larger warhead going from 65 pounds to 86 pounds. It's got some solid state electronics, improving its ability to track targets and stay on target. Also, it became compatible with pulse Doppler radars or the fans of the Phantom. The Phantom F4E should only have a pulse radar. So that pulse Doppler compatibility is actually what makes this missile compatible with the Tomcat. That's why it's available on the Tomcat right now that you can practice with. This will be, I believe, the best missile available for the F4E Phantom. So get to know this missile, get to love it. But what about its performance close up? Well, I'm thinking the E2 still will be that beneficial short range missile for dogfights. The Sparrow G edition that was made for the F111 and a very small production run was made. The F111 got superseded by the Tomcat. All right, we're moving up into the modern age, the Sparrow M, the AIM-7M. M stands for monopulse. Its range got bumped up and its ability got bumped up from the 16 nautical miles. Now, speed, still Mach 4, continuous rod warhead of 88 pounds, but now it has inertial navigation and a digital processor, meaning that the missile could fly an autopilot course towards the enemy target at those ranges because the ranges got bumped up even more to 38 nautical miles, 70 kilometers. This is the late M slash P Sparrow, which became the standard at the end of the Cold War. We're talking mid 1980s all the way through to its last production run, which was the Sparrow 7P. It's an improved version of the M improved against tracking smaller low-flying targets. As a matter of fact, with the M and P, you could actually do look down, shoot down against terrain, whereas the 7F could lose targets against the ground very easily. Beyond that, the Sparrow generation kind of ends up stopping at the P. There was supposed to be an R and a Q variant, but those never entered production and we're likely never to see these in DCS world. So as a pilot, what do we need to know? Well, the summary is such that A, B, and C were likely never to see in DCS world. The E and the E2 will be the primary missiles available for any scenarios featuring early Vietnam. Late Vietnam scenarios will be the Sparrow F, and I think for most of the F4s, that will be the best missile you can have. Why? Unless there is an upgraded version of the F4 that comes out, the Sparrow m &P were not compatible and not used on any aircraft other than the upgraded F-4s of Greece, the UK, and Turkey. So that may be a limitation to keep in mind, pilots. And for now, that's about it. Plasma 1945 is out of here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Leave comments as to which Sparrows you think you are going to like and use. And as always, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the air. Plasma 1945, out.